So where do we get the capacity from? Well, look at this. Wireless capacity, how has it increased over the last uh, decades? Well, it turns out there's a law which is called Cooper's Law. Capacity in the last 35 years has uh, multiplied by a factor of a million, right? So as we went from 2G to 3G, 4G, uh, it's about a million. Um, look at this. So physical layer, right? Physical layer contributed to a factor of five. Okay, then spectrum contributed to a factor of 25, and uh, smaller cells contributed a whooping factor of 1,600. You understand that picture, right? If I push you now a little bit here, I push you a little bit here. It means that as we went from 2G to 3G to 4G, always introducing new modulation schemes, impact was 0.3%. Okay. Am I smiling or? Oh dear. 0.3%. We could have used on off keying from 1912. <laughs> You're a great crowd. Normally nobody laughs about this joke, but you understand on off keying. <laughs> I love you. So that's great, right? See the problem, okay? We should have spent all the money rather digging cables and uh, putting more, more base stations. I'll leave that with you. It's not fully true because things are serial. But I'd like you to understand that really what really drives wireless capacity or capacity in general is really the smaller cell sizes. And that means heterogeneous architectures. Uh, it means how we connect things, etc. The physical layer needs to be there. You need to make sure it works really well because without it, nothing would work. You clearly need spectrum. But the low-hanging fruit is with smaller cell size, right? And the AT&Zs and Verizons in the room will probably confirm that. There you go. As simple as that.